This week in the news, there were reports of UFOs seen over an Indian nuclear facility. A new UFO college class will soon be available. CERN might have found a fourth dimension ghost particle. Updates on the Venus alien life update and more. So let's get into it. We're not even going to hesitate. All right, going on with our first one, talking about India and people seeing UFOs right over a nuclear facility. How many times have we heard this? Too many times to count, and it is happening even in present day. No country is safe. So according to the Indian newspaper named DT Next, they reported on a series of very intriguing events that unfolded during the summer of 2022. Now you might say, Christine, that says weekly news, not several years ago news. I know that, but this was just reported on as an Indian police serviceman just came forward and released this information, telling people his encounter just a few days ago. So this is still pretty new to us in the news realm. So you have Syed Abdul Kader, an investigator with the Indian Police Service, and he reported witnessing very strange aerial lights above the Kudan Kalmar, nope, Kudan Kulam, there we go, nuclear power plant on more than 10 separate occasions. Now one, not two, you know how to count, all the way up until 10. So Kadar managed to capture two videos that documented the mysterious bright lights performing very unusual zigzag maneuvers above the facility. And what he was looking at was very bizarre to him. You're able to hear his commentary of this is not an airplane. This is nothing that is conventional. It was so moving to him that he shared his video footage and his several encounters to a UFO expert and director of the Indian Society for UFO Studies, Sabir Hussain. And there, this is how we were able to get this information that I'm able to relay to you now. And in one recording that was given to the UFO expert, goes back to August 8th of last year at around 7.30 p.m. local time. And it can be heard Kadar giving this narration over the video. And it says, it's shaking when it's moving. It's going up and down. The way it's moving, this could never be an airplane. Let's go back just for a moment. This guy is an investigator with the Indian Police Service. He knows about airplanes. He knows about drones. We can guess he knows about weather balloons. So for him to say this is very odd, on top of that, he saw it 10 times. And then on top of that, because we're making a beautiful layer cake together, he's seeing these sightings near and above a nuclear facility. We've heard this with the Maelstrom Air Force Base. We've heard this in the Vandenberg, California Air Force Base. And those are just two of the more famous ones. We've heard them from Ukraine back in the 1990s as well. This is a very prevalent theme. Rendlesham, you know, the list goes on and on. And if I missed one, put it in the live chat, put it in the comments. I'll be like, damn, I missed that one. But it gets even better because Cater's wife, who was also present during some of those sightings, mentioned that she had witnessed the phenomenon multiple times, always occurring when it was neither too dark nor too bright, like Goldilocks or something. And the couple noted that the UFOs consistent, consistently appeared in the southern direction, hovering near the nuclear power plant. And the direction of the UFO at sunset on August 8th eliminates the possibility of it being a common bright planet or a star as confirmed by a sky map geolocated uh, that was looked at during that time frame and in the area, which is something that's so beautiful about today is that we have that kind of technology and that understanding that anyone can get a hold of. So for people that have had a UFO sighting, or if you're just about to have one, for who knows what reason. Yes, you definitely need to look at uh, where the planets were, if there are any extra bright stars. We also today have access to flight 
patterns, flight paths, satellite paths. We didn't have that 20, 30 years ago where it was readily and easily available. We have that now. And when you collect all of that data and it doesn't this whatever you saw in the sky or near the water, right? USO, if it doesn't match all the data that you're finding, you're like, okay, this is a UFO. Merely unidentified is an alien. Don't know about that just yet, but it's nice to check off all of the mundane possibilities before reporting it to people, right? But it gets even more interesting because concerned that the object not might not be of human origin, Cater sought the expertise of that UFO researcher. Again, his name is Sabir Hussain. And he said that, let me back up on this, because Hussain who had previously petitioned the Supreme Court of India back in 2019 to take the unexplained sightings near the country's nuclear facilities more seriously, that's how Cater knew about this UFO expert, because he had spoken to the Indian Supreme Court. I've been doing this research for quite a few years now. I like to think in today's point in time, I'm decently knowledgeable. I never knew about this. Did you? This is so brand new to me for someone to walk up to the Supreme Court in India back in 2019 and say, hey, you need to take these UFO sightings specifically over nuclear facilities very seriously. Uh, yes, you definitely should. But I've never read that in a newspaper or in an article. And if you have, you are on the ball. You are amazing. But if you haven't, Raise your hand. Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments. Because I don't want to be the only one here and be kind of awkward about it, right? But at the same time, I know I'm not the only one. So this is why this information is so interesting. It is unfortunate that this person didn't come out in 2022 to give this information. We are just now hearing about it. But it's just adding to the list of so many UFO sightings that have been seen over nuclear facilities. The question is why? We've asked this for a few decades now. And while we have some ideas and some possibilities, we don't have an exact exact answer on to why that is. We know why it might be but not fully sure. Is it because they're like, you know, parents, for instance, and they don't want us to play with dangerous toys like fire? Is it to protect their assets and their resources? Is it to protect the earth because they care about humanity? The possibilities are endless. Is it just because they like the area and it resonates nicely with them, right? While that might have been a slight joke, it could maybe, possibly be real. We do not no, but I do want to hear your thoughts on this before we move forward. What do you think about this article and the possibilities onto why UFOs might be seen over and around nuclear facilities? I will give you a moment to go ahead and answer that. Chris says, I have heard of this case as well as many others when it comes to UFOs over nuclear bases. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not an uncommon pattern for sure. It's very interesting. Let's see. Uh, and Chris has a throat and chest infection. Bless your heart. I hope you get better. Getting into our next one. This one's very interesting. I think it's very cool as well. That Portland Community College is venturing into a unique academic territory this spring by offering a new area of study centered on UFOs. And the class is titled From Film to Real Life? Question mark. UFOs, UAP, Government, and the Media. It's an online class and it's categorized under cultural exploration. And the brainchild behind this course is Brian Aslinger, a veteran television news reporter known for his work at the KRCW's Everyday Northwest and previously at the KATU-TV, where he served as assistant news director and executive producer. And I, this is, okay, 
if I were still in university college, I would have taken this course because I think it's super awesome. Now, the downfall to this course is that it's for not a credit like you're paying for it, but it's not going towards your credits that you need in order to graduate really big downfall on that. I don't know how that's going to do for him, but uh, pushing that aside, this is very cool. And even for the Portland Community College to agree to it, there have been a few other UFO courses in the last, what, six years or so across the country. Uh, some of them have been online, some of them have been in person. But what we're noticing here is that it's becoming more consistent, not entirely, but enough for reports to be made on it, for articles to be written about it. So I think it's very cool, just like Anthony here. Pretty cool. Yes, I think so. Donna says ufology is among them, us, everyone. Who knows? Possibilities here are endless. And that's kind of what I like. So if you are interested, you can take the class. Uh, the course is scheduled to run from April 18th to May 23rd, providing a timely opportunity for academic exploration of this very interesting, intriguing, fascinating subject matter. I think it's very cool. Also, the standpoint of looking at it from a media perspective, especially when you are dealing with a news producer, right? I this could go one of two ways. One of two ways. Either it could be some kind of maybe some kind of propaganda, or it could be an actual interest on how to analyze news footage, um, videos, movies, documentaries, and to kind of feel out what is genuine and what is not. That title there is very vague and people won't know what they're going to expect until they either get the curriculum or until they sit in that class for about a week. But here's a really cool thing about this class is that according to this article that was written by W Week, it says that there will be a guest, there will be guest speakers for the course, at least as of now. And one of them will be Navy pilot Ryan Graves. I hope that happens. I think that is super sick, super cool. Oh, and by the way, if you really like strange news or anything in the realm of the strange and the mysterious, subscribe to this channel as I do three videos right here every single week. That button is right down below. Our next one, this one's cool. It's about the paranormal. We haven't been covering the paranormal as frequently as I'd like for strange news. We've been doing a lot of UFO stuff, because that's what this channel really focuses on, and science advancements. But I got some pretty cool paranormal information, because the archives for the unexplained, also known as the AFU, nice, located in Sweden, boasts the, well, they're mentioning, they're like, we think we're pretty cool because we think that we are the largest library in the world of paranormal phenomena with 4.2 kilometers or 2.6 miles of shelves running underground. Move aside, Vatican. Okay, this is really, that's a lot. That is a lot of space and for it to be filled with shelves of books and newspapers and article clippings in all of that space where 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 are they finding all of this it's so awesome why am i bringing this up well for one there's an article written about it just a few days ago but number two some of this is already digital like it's been digitized so you're able to find some of it online on their website but they are still working on digitizing as much as possible but could you imagine you're dealing with a little under three miles of shelves and you got to scan everything that's a lifetime of work at the same time i would volunteer to do it no question number one love libraries love the smell of old books solid number two while you're scanning or number three while you're scanning the papers and the books you can kind of read along as well and get new information that has never ever touched the internet <gasps> i live for that that is so cool but there's more to this because even though 
they talk about that they are the biggest world's the, the world's largest library when it comes to the paranormal phenomena at least they only get about 300 visitors every single year and by appointment only by the way so it's a little a little extra on that they only get 300 visitors and it's only by appointment in sweden so the next time you go to sweden or if you live in sweden go to the norrkoping city of sweden and you can go make an appointment and check it out. There have been a few people, including a professor of history and bioethics at the Pennsylvania State University, who has gone there and has found some pretty interesting things referring to the paranormal and even history books referring to UFOs. I am waiting for the moment when they finish scanning everything. Ah. Yes, I would read that stuff. I would spend my whole life reading that stuff, wouldn't you? Yeah, Zenza says, so, Christina, when are you visiting them? Man, any any time, any day now. I would go to Sweden just for that and for their chocolate. Funny enough, actually, I have a bar of chocolate right here that's from Sweden. It tastes like coffee. I'm not super fond of it, but Sweden, uh, synchronicities here, right? Or is it? Don't know. You can make up your own mind on that one. <laughs> oh, we're a little behind here. All work low pay says, yeah, I'd take that class for sure. Referring to the UFO class. Yes, but question is for this one, would you go to this library? Would you make an appointment and check it all out? I'd like to know how many languages are in that library. They just collected it in, you know, just from like Sweden or just in Europe, or across the globe information. That's what I would like to know. And I would go. I would I would bring my phone and have it translate everything for me. We live in a beautiful age. We're able to do that now. Super cool stuff. Oh, 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 and by the way, also another by the way, I do write articles for all of the shows done right here on this channel. So if you like to read or if you're a researcher yourself, you can find my bite-sized articles on Medium under Christina G or on my website at strangeparadigms.com. That link is in the description box below. And that description box is your friend. There's a bunch of great information in there. There will be the article links. There will be a timeline index. And there are all of my social media links, including my website, to where all the articles are written for these shows. Take a look at it. It's, it's worth your time. Next one. Oh, this is so cool. Because why? Why? Great question. Because scientists at CERN which is Europe's leading particle research center, are embarking on a groundbreaking experiment to uncover the existence of mysterious particles dubbed ghost particles. We've heard about this, but they have just come across some research that proves it to be very weird. Because these particles, if entirely proven true, they're still kind of in the hypothetical stage, right? Could significantly expand our understanding of the universe, dark matter, dark energy, right? And unlike traditional particle collisions, this experiment will employ a novel approach by smashing particles into a solid surface aiming to detect the elusive ghost particles that are believed to just rarely interact with regular matter. So what they have began or have begun to see here is that when they're smashing these particles, they found this, what they classify as the fourth dimension ghost particle to where when they're just about to smash these two particles, just about to hit, it hits this solid, non-solid object. And then the particle disperses. Solid, non-solid object. That's why it's called, for now, the fourth dimension ghost particle. Because they don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. You probably don't know what it is either. You can take a guess. But you know what? People, myself included, really like science to back up the strange, the mysterious, the paranormal, so on and so forth. Yeah, they're a little bit behind on information that's been passed down for centuries. And yet, you know, we like the data. We like the paperwork. And for sure to be doing this and finding some strange things, at the very least, at a hypothetical 
level is very cool. Side note, we have covered CERN before, and they are making another one several times larger than CERN. That's still going to be in Sweden. That they want to just make a bigger, fatter, who knows what, just a bigger one, in order to smash particles at a honestly it's not even at a faster rate because they're almost at the speed of light it's like what 99 point something at the speed at they're smashing these particles at they want to make one significantly bigger but are they going to reach the speed of light by making it bigger i asked this before i don't even know how many weeks ago when we covered this but a handful of weeks ago and it just doesn't seem plausible or reasonable to make another one but i could be wrong i could be ignorant here and that's what i have you for to fill in those gaps aj raffles thank you for that christina looks concerned <laughs> that's a good one i do like myself some puns there and that was even a knee slapper that i actually slapped my knee uh puns and dad jokes yeah solid 10. Even Tyler laughed. <laughs> AJ, yeah, it's funny. Ghost particles, says Goff. That's what they're classifying it as of now, but there isn't a particular name for it just yet. Yes, Mud Fossil. Einstein's spooky science. Yes, talking about quantum mechanics and spooky action at a distance. Spooky, yeah, yeah. Spooky action at a distance. I'm pretty sure that, that's the right way to say it. It's all very cool stuff, and Einstein has been thinking about this since the early 1900s, and here we are today, and we're still looking into it with no hardcore information on these. But quantum mechanics, quantum physics is becoming more of a reality significantly. I'm not going to say every single day, because it's a little bit too cliche here, but significantly enough to where it is more commonly being spoken about than two decades ago when it was still a little too crazy and it's still a little too hypothetical. I will say this. Nikola Tesla said, listen to this closely, if you say you understand quantum mechanics, you do not understand quantum mechanics. And man, do I fit so fat in that category. Why? Because I know nothing other than the mere basics about quantum mechanics. And if you say that you know all about it, write me a book. I would read it, but make it simple for the simple mind. Okay, because I'm kind of like with math and physics. Yeah, that's kind of difficult. Tyler says, very punny. Yes, yes, it is very punny. I liked it. Spirit Particle says, moon at noon. Yes. Core says, the universe will always win. And so we're able to officially tap into the universe and maybe we'll be able to win. But as of now, yes, we fall into the elements of day and night, life and death. But soon, maybe we'll tap into the universe. Next one that we're getting into, I love this one. Talking about Venus. And why are we bringing up Venus? Because since the year 2020, there has been this significant debate talking about is it potential or is it possible for there to be life on Venus, even though we think it is like incredibly toxic with these toxic clouds? How is it even possible for there to be life? How could you even think that there could be life? As of the year 2020, there were scientists at, and I can tell you the university that it came from, at the University of Cardiff, they said, well, we found these particles that we classified as phosphines that could potentially harbor, at the very least, just like very basic life, like what plants are able to create, right? And so then during that time frame, 2020, 2021, there was this, yes, phosphines, no phosphines, yes, phosphines, no you're out of your mind and you're crazy and you're dumb. Well, recently, scientists are mentioning that, oh, we haven't, oh, we're not going to bring up phosphines. It's a little bit too controversial here. We have found some odd amino acids that could potentially lead to the idea of their being life based off of the studies conducted in a lab. And this is according to space.com. I'm telling you, I, 
I eat this stuff up. Now, if I hadn't been following this debate since the year 2020, I'd be so lost. But don't worry. If you feel lost, I got you on this one because we have covered this over the years, not like every single day, but whenever a new article comes out, we cover it here on Strangest News of the Week. And so scientists suggest that if Venus hosts life forms in its toxic clouds, they may not be deprived of essential building blocks like amino acids, according to the results of a recent lab experiment. Because despite Venus being Earth's twin, it boasts extreme conditions with temperatures soaring to hundreds of degrees and a thick atmosphere of corrosive sulfuric acid clouds. And while Venus isn't traditionally seen as a hospitable environment for life, researchers speculate that the cooler temperatures and chemical composition of its clouds might provide a potential habitat for extreme life forms, distinct from those found on more hospitable celestial bodies like Mars or some of Jupiter's and Saturn's moons. Just a few years ago, we were saying there is, it is not possible for there to be any life on Venus. And now they're saying, mm, you know what, maybe, maybe we were wrong. Ah, I love that. I love when scientists and researchers say based off of new information, when they say, you know what, maybe we weren't entirely right. Why do I love this? One of two reasons. Number one, we are always learning new things. While we think that our foundation is so sturdy, it could so easily crack and crumble at any moment new data comes forward because we do not know everything. Number two, scientists and researchers, they got a fat ego a lot of the times. And when they say that, that they're wrong, it humbles them. It humbles anybody to admit that they are wrong sometimes and it is okay. You can't be right all the time. You're not Superman. You're not God. And that's fine. But it's better to admit it ahead of time before someone catches you and it's too late. Reputation ruined or tainted, right? Getting on to this, a lab experiment conducted by scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, you know the acronym, it's MIT, it simulated Venus's acidic environment and found that 19 amino acids persisted for at least a month in the solution containing sulfuric acid and water mirroring the conditions of the clouds on Venus. And this very surprising resilience challenges the notion that sulfuric acid universally destroys organic compounds, hinting that Venus clouds could harbor complex molecules conductive and conducive to life. I love this. This is so cool. Okay, in so many ways. We've also heard, what, we could say like what, in the 80s? 60s, 70s, 80s. There were people that had mentioned, I'm being contacted by aliens from Venus. I'm being contacted by aliens on Mars, right? And 20, 30 years ago, we're like, nah, there cannot be life on Mars. No, there cannot be life on Venus. It is impossible. Things are kind of racking up. Number one, people, scientists are saying, no, there, there might be a whole ocean just a few miles deep into the Mars's crust. Venus, oh, you know, maybe, just maybe, it's not as terrible as we thought it was. Well, I don't necessarily will lean to the fact that these people that are saying, oh, I was visited by people of Venus and Mars, just the idea, I'm bringing that up as an example to display to you that life can take place anywhere. But also number two, when 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we thought that's impossible. Now we're like, you know what? maybe possible, maybe not intelligent life, but at the very least, a form of life. And you know what scientists love to say? Microbial life and tardigrades, water bears. People say that they're cute. I don't see it. They're pudgy, but their faces look like leeches. And I'm going to pass on that one. 
Now, in the experiment, there were various biogenetic amino acids essential for life on Earth where dissolved in sulfuric acid mixed with water, mimicking Venus's atmospheric conditions. And despite the highly acidic environment, the molecular structure of 19 out of the 20 amino acids remained intact over the four-week study period. That is spectacular and shocking at the exact same time. If you want to read more on that, those articles will be in the description box below on everything. And you can also look at this debate between is there life on Mars? What are not on Mars, on Venus? I was thinking about David Bowie there for a moment. But life on Venus, talking about the phosphines and that whole fiasco going on. It's pretty cool stuff if you're interested in space exploration. Um, that's it, it, For me, it tickles my fancy, but it maybe it also does for you. And that's why you watch these shows. But that, those are all of our articles for today. Out of the ones that we covered, which one was your favorite? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments. But let's spend just a few minutes here between you and I, answering any of your questions or mentioning why a certain article was your favorite. For me, I think it's really awesome to hear that yet another country is coming forward to tell their stories of UFOs and nuclear facilities, because as I had mentioned for that article, no country is safe in the terms of them not being monitored by these strange craft in the sky. So I liked hearing that, but I'm also a UFO nut. Okay, but what about you? Which one was your favorite? WW3 says the library one. Yes, you cannot go wrong with a nice, nice library. Let me ask you this. For those that like libraries, which one did you visit that was your favorite? Okay, I love all li most libraries. They're pretty awesome. Moon and says, the library, I'm a nerd too. Seems like it's like it's a pretty big one here. Let's see. Wolfgang bringing in the brownie points, all of them. That's a good answer. It is. J. Allen Heineken says, I haven't been to a library since college. Oh my goodness. Should revisit one. They're fun. see. Bit says, will there be more universities offering UAP classes? It just depends on if professors want to teach the class. I believe you need to have a master's degree in order to teach a class for a college or university. Someone correct me there, but I feel like that is right. And then you have to submit it to the board and then they can either agree or disagree and see if there is any kind of interest for that class. So it just depends on if there's availability for these professors to teach it more so than the curriculum or the push from the university. But I'd like that to be the case. I think that'd be really awesome. I really do. Cindy says, I love ghost particles. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty fun one. Mud Fossil says, I like all this today. I like them all this today. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> well, that is it. I want to say thank you for everyone watching this line. Before you head out, I do have a music channel called Cosmic Portals. A new album was released just a few weeks ago, and you can find it here on YouTube at Cosmic Portals. Also, I want to say thank you to all of the Super Chats, my YouTube members, Patreon supporters, all of my incredible moderators, I said this, but I'll say it again. All of those that caught this show live, I really appreciate it. Let me know your favorite article. Hit that like button right down below if and only if you enjoyed the show and subscribe if you haven't already. That is it for today. I will see you next time. Be safe and remember, keep your eyes on the skies. If you enjoy the strange and the mysterious, UFOs, the paranormal, and cryptids, this channel is for you. So make sure to subscribe as I do three videos right here every single week and hit that notification bell so you do not miss any of the bonus content I post right here.